Hello out there, my friends. It is I, Hondo Onaka. Now you know what to do. You must tune in to my favorite podcast, The Five-ish Fangirls. Otherwise, there could be consequences. The tangents of we continue all the way to episode 362 of the Five Ish Fan Girls Podcast. Woo! I've not seen this much love in a room since Narcissus discovered himself. Welcome, everyone, to this week's episode of the Five Ish Fan Girls Podcast. So glad you us. Let's start off like a with a virtual table and see who's joined us this week. This is Brittany Bavrio. This is Chrissy in Salt Lake City. This is Holly from Wisconsin. And this is Rachel in Indianapolis, Indiana, or Mount Olympus. Take your pick. Uh, <laughs> but only gods can live on Mount Olympus. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's been something I've been meaning to tell you guys. I was going to say, oh. there's something, is there something you need to mention? <laughs> something you need to share with the class, Rachel? <laughs> How do you brought it up? Yeah. <laughs> well, well. Never actually had a pomegranate, but no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, well, we'll get to that. First up, we need to do Zen News, just a little bit. Uh, first up in convention news, uh, the podcast award submissions for this year's Andy PopCon podcast uh, contest uh, are now open. So you can go to the PopCon website and submit your podcast to the appropriate category and uh, crush fingers and see if you win <laughs> come June. <laughs> so. yep. Super exciting. Yep. Well, yeah. We're working really hard on the back end to up the award ceremony <laughs> so there's a bit more pomp and circumstance than there has been recently so well it's been one really. guy doing most of the work now he has help so yeah well given the last couple of years you could probably be forgiven for for less That's pomp true. and circumstance <laughs> than That's you true. normally would like so so anyway so Anyone out, out there, podcasters, mm -hmm. go enter. And anyone's press. eligible, any podcast, anywhere. You don't have to be in Indiana. I mean, it helps if you can come to PopCon. That way, if you win, you can accept your award in person. But even if you know you can't make it to the show, still submit. <laughs> <You know>? Sure. <laughs> we can mail your award to you. And and you you could you could record a, an acceptance speech if you really wanted to. <laughs> mm -hmm. We'll post it somewhere so people can be like, "Thank you." <clears throat> well, anyway, because I mean, regardless of whether you're there, you still get to put winner next to your name, so or your show's Absolutely. name. Absolutely, you still get the bragging rights. <laughs> All right, well, moving on to. Wait, you found this piece of news, Chrissy. I did yeah. indeed. So I will I will chat this one up. I'm actually pretty excited. So a little bit of a little bit of background. Um so you have Crunchyroll, who is that that you know streams a lot of anime. But mm -hmm. they don't have everything. If you know you've looked on there, like there's been stuff that I've specific things I'm like, oh I want to watch this. And no, it's not there, even though I do have a Crunchyroll account. And then there's Funimation, mm -hmm. they have their own thing. Yep. Uh, and so there's uh -huh. kind of this, you know, if you're a big anime fan and you want to watch all the anime that you, you know, could, to your heart's desire, you could only get certain ones. I mean, it, both have a pretty big catalog. But uh, anyway, as, as is as is wont to have, Crunchyroll got bought up by Sony. Funimation mm -hmm. was no wait, I've gotten that. I've got what Warner Brothers bought both bought one of them. And Sony bought mm -hmm. the other. I'm forgetting which is which. And then, and, and because, and it turned, and it thought we we thought that I think it was Crunchyroll got bought by Warner Brothers. I'm sorry, I'm getting this all mixed up. The nope. point is, one of them was just was probably Sony just be, owned. Yeah, 
Funimation and yes. then completed its acquisition of Crunchyroll for $1.175 billion. Yes. Well, the, the fear <laughs> yeah, was that, that Crunchyroll was just going to be like a ta- like the anime tab on, on HBO Max or something. But now Sony's got them both. And, there's, and then it was like, well, maybe Crunchyroll will, will, will be rolled <laughs> into Funimation. Yeah. But no, Funimation way is going to be rolled into Crunchyroll. <laughs> Which yeah. is kind of a big deal because yeah, Funimation's been doing some unsavory things. I don't want to go too much into the politics of it because it, it's it's a it's a long and nasty road. But point is, uh, some of Funimation's policies have come back to bite them in the butt, and now they're mm-hmm. just going to be curdle. And this kind of you know jaw was on the floor when I saw this news but mm-hmm. either way so and there's you know there's a, a an faq page link to on this this link um and i looked at it because i do have a crunchyroll subscription um basically if you're a crunchyroll subscriber you don't have to do anything the rates i don't know if the rates are going to go up they didn't say anything but i it's not outside the real possibility i'm sure um mm-hmm. but i mean crunchyroll is still pretty like, affordable um, oh yeah, but all, you know, eventually, and it's going to be a process. They're going to roll. They're going to bring all their stuff over to Crunchyroll. The interface is going to stay the same. Now, now, if you're a Funimation subscriber, um, all the current series because they'll do simulcasts where new anime, like they'll update new episodes, but they're not going to bring any new series on. It's all just going to be on Crunchyroll. But if there's a current series that you're watching on Funimation, it's going to finish. And then eventually, Funimation is just going to be phased out, and it's all going to be on Crunchyroll. Mm-hmm. So, and there's I'm your hoping huge... I have some, I have some digital Funimation because I had bought some anime DVDs. So, right. yay, free digital copy. It's just yeah. like, hmm, oh, this is I great. What's going to yeah. happen to that? <laughs> now, I haven't heard, but uh, one way or the other. But then this is just me guessing, but. Mm-hmm. And where this is Sony that owns it, and, and that they're kind of you know minus minus the video game <laughs> component or you know department of their of their company, which that's another story entirely. I kind of get the feeling that they're going to take care of that somehow. They they oh, might great. introduce, they might take the technology that Fun, that Funimation had and say, oh yeah, we're you know here's your Crunchyroll digital library now. Because I can't mm-hmm. imagine that they would be like, "Oh, sorry, you're just screwed." Yeah. <laughs> but it, but it feels like they're making this into one big. Hey, this is our anime um, arm, which you know, with it being Sony, and Sony is a Japanese company originally. Obviously, they have you know offices and whatnot all over the place, but mm-hmm. I can't imagine they wouldn't take care of that. But everything is still very much in the in in the beginning stages but they are far enough along that they could announce this so um so yeah if there was a so you know and and they're still working on putting putting all the funimations catalog onto crunchyroll and they do have a a list that they're going to keep a running tally of everything that 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 has been migrated over so check that out because i was I was tr- trying to watch pre-tier on the, fu- on the free side of Funimation because I did not want to give Funimation any money if I could help it. Um, but the ads were annoying. But I'm like, oh, yay, it's going to come to Crunchyroll eventually. So I'm watching for that one to show up. So anyway, so anime fans, rejoice. You don't have to have a gazillion different subscriptions all over the place. Now, I'm not saying Crunchyroll hasn't exactly covered themselves or you know, has has covered themselves in glory in certain ways. They've done some un well, some of their crap has you know been been obnoxious. But of the less of the two, I think I think Funimation is kind of the one I give the stink eye the most to. But yay Crunchyroll, yay anime, and mm-hmm. I am excited. When I'll have to get. Yay for more content in one area instead of yes. You know, which one right. do I have to go to? I know. Mm-hmm. I I get the feeling, and this, and not just with anime, but just kind of in general. I get the feeling that once all these, you know, streaming people calling it the streaming wars, quote unquote. Which okay, I guess that's about as good as a good a name as anything. 
for it, but I, f I get the feeling there's going to be like one or, well, like a handful of streaming services and then they just all, because they've all bought each other out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it, but... Me being a UK British mystery fan, I'm waiting for the day Brit Box and Acorn decide, hey, let's join teams here so everything's in one spot. Right. <laughs> Especially since like our library, we had, we used to have RB Digital, but then Overdrive bought them out and, and I could get Acorn through RB Digital. And mm -hmm. I, Overdrive still has it, but it's in a really weird spot. And not every library gets it because it's really expensive. I mean, again, that's something <laughs> that's a rabbit hole I could go down down mm -hmm. a long time a long ways, and everybody would be snoring before <laughs> I was done explaining, so I'm not going to, but yeah, it's like, come on, guys, just play nice, please. Mm -hmm. We did all this cord cutting because we were trying to save money, and now it's like uh, it's turning out to be more expensive, <laughs> yes, it's like, ugh, who would have thunk. <laughs> At least I don't have to deal with any obnoxious um, direct TV customer service people. <laughs> True. Yeah. So, if I need to cancel, I have to um, get my crunch rule back. I had it for a while, but then, like, the whole thing, mm. like, I had way too many streaming sites. I had it. A... Yeah. Well, well, and it's like, okay, how many. Like, like how many are you actually watching realistically so yeah. I, I mean for a long time i just had the free crunchy roll because i wasn't watching that much anime but then i started watching more and more and i was like actually this makes more sense to buy the subscription so i canceled a couple others that i had and did crunchy roll and it's they've been good to me so far as far as the streaming mm -hmm. service now their originals eh, i i kind of hope that they've given up that particular hope and dream because please don't just 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 stream <laughs> just stream stuff just stream stuff from japan you don't need to make anything of your own mm -hmm. just don't mm -hmm. no so anyway there's that yep well and kind of in the same vein uh <laughs> <laughs> it is streaming and streaming it yeah. is, yeah, referring to streaming and like, wait, where's that thing I like? Where where do I go to watch it? Mm -hmm. the, all and of our the... speculations finally been answered? <laughs> yes. Well, in this case, it was answered, but not the way I expected. Uh, right, yes. I really <laughs> thought that all this stuff was going to go to Hulu. But no, well, I kind of the I MCU, thought there might have been... All the MCU shows pre-Disney Plus, so Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Agent Carter, all the Defenders related, Jessica Jones, Iron Fist, all of those, instead of going to Hulu, are going to Disney Plus. They've been removed from Netflix as of the end of February. Um, it will soon be available for streaming on Disney Plus in US, Canada, Next UK, Wednesday. Ireland, and Australia, New Zealand. Um, <clears throat> and there are going to be updated parental controls also. Mm -hmm. On Disney Plus, so so you don't have to worry about your youngins watching mm -hmm. Toy Story and suddenly stumbling upon Daredevil. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah. well, if if my kids if my kids have been watching Toy Story and Disney Plus just tells them that they might like Daredevil, there's something wrong with your algorithm. First off, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I do. I, I do don't think that'll happen. <laughs> yes, but you know, but uh, yeah, so. Uh, I, I understand. But yeah, I'm, and I'm I, glad that uh, they are all they are all getting moved. At, you know, Disney. There are some people out there. You know who you are. They're all like, "Good, all the Netflix stuff will just disappear." I'm like, no, because nope. it is <laughs> canon now, yeah. thanks to a couple of mm -hmm. recent. It was <laughs> in my mind. It was canon anyway. But right. for all yes. the haters. <laughs> They made it canon pretty blatantly in a, re a few recent productions that have come out in the last few months. I'm just yes. saying. Yes. Yes. yes, this is true. <laughs> and, and like, I mean, yeah, it, you know, if you if Disney was worried about, you know, the, the not being family friendly, but at the same time, like, those are Marvel things. So it would make, wouldn't make a lot of sense to put them on Hulu. And, yeah, so it's like, yeah, they could do that, but, mm, yeah. 
and honestly, I don't think there's any reason for them not to put more adult content on Disney Plus. I mean, it's right. kind of it's kind of the world's worst kept secret that Disney does produce pg-13 and r-rated stuff just under you know touchstone or hollywood mm -hmm. pictures or one of their other labels so it's like who are you guys fooling really right because yeah. <laughs> i think we had even mentioned earlier when they came out we had discussed this too and i had mentioned oh maybe they'll have a special adults only section well here yeah. we go Pro or you know show. i mean they are they already have the kids profile mm -hmm. right which yeah. is like it's like mom and dad are gonna be able to watch something once the kids go to sleep yeah right <laughs> i mean and you know netflix has the same thing i mm -hmm. think hulu has as a, a, a similar thing that they only have it's you know you create a profile and that's the one that your kids use mm -hmm, so it's mm -hmm. kind of like well i mean and yeah the, the parental controls very appreciated of course um but it's like uh, to me it's a non-issue yeah. With the, but you know i appreciate the gesture because <laughs> sometimes i want to watch something a little more grown up mm -hmm. right it's like i get my fill of muppet babies and mickey mouse roadster racers <laughs> and well you know i'm like you know these aren't too bad yeah. the pj masks that kind of thing these aren't <clears throat> as far as kids programming but you know i need something a little more grown up sometimes mm. yep um and then in disney adjacent uh <laughs> from the jim henson company um they are working with uh this name of this company mighty coconuts <laughs> you gotta name your organization something so why not um hey it's memorable <clears throat> yeah they are working yeah. with yeah they are working with them to develop a 36 hole virtual reality course yes. set uh -huh. in the I world the... of labyrinth <laughs> <laughs> oh boy take me there yes <laughs> holly's like when's my next vacation <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> And how much are those virtual goggles going to set me back? I can say yeah. it now. <laughs> well, and, and I know both Holly and Brittany have had opportunities to play in mm -hmm. virtual reality. Thanks to Chauncey. <laughs> so, <Yes. laughs> Granted, they were playing Star Wars, but still, you know. Mm -hmm. It counts. It counts. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but yeah, I'm like, ooh. It's like I'm bad at miniature golf in real life. I can't be much worse in virtual reality. So <laughs> you know. So what if I wing hoggle a couple of times? Yeah. It's all good. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's not like you're actually losing your ball in the pond. Mm -hmm. Or the bog. The, the bog of a turtle stench. stench. <laughs> yeah. Or that too. <laughs> Just be glad it's VR and not the holodeck, so we don't have smell o vision quite yet. So <laughs> true. Yes. Yeah. Would Sir Didymus be our caddy? Yeah, really. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. That would be uh, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> That's uh, due to be released sometime in the summer. Holly, you're going to have to get it and then do a review for the podcast. <laughs> yeah. We can hear it through all the squee. Yeah. <laughs> I, I will start saving pennies now for the Labyrinth Fund. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sure that Chauncey would be like and sold so that I can get Rachel to play in VR more. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. hey, whatever you got to do. Mm -hmm. One of these days, I'll get back to playing Doctor Who <laughs> that I started pre pandemic. <laughs> oh, oh, my. So. All right. Well, that's it for. Zan news. So, um, moving on to feedback. Some feedback from Shalane. Um, and talking about 
some of the stuff we talked about uh last show um and uh talking about the uh the chip nail <laughs> the rescue rangers <laughs> movie um she says that she wasn't sure or she says i wasn't sure how i felt about a Chippendale Rescue Stranger live action movie. Join um, the rest of us. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, she figured that they would do something similar in the veins of like the Alvin and the Chipmunks movies. Oh, or the yeah. Smurfs. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> that's something that's been done recently too, which they, I mean, they kind of have, except only one of them is CGI. So, you know. Kinda sorta kinda sorta. If you tilt your head and squint Squint. a little bit. Yeah. 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 Um and she said another eighties pop culture reference. Uh she forgot to mention for season five of Stranger Things that could appear is Full House. It could be. Could be. Mm -hmm. Um and then uh, talking about our names that we pulled from the hat last episode. Uh, she's pretty much the same as us as far as the things that we've seen these gentlemen in. Like yeah. Liam Neeson, Phantom mm-hmm. Menace, Narnia, the Lego movie, mm-hmm. the Dark Knight series, John Reese davies and Indiana Jones and Lord of the Rings. So yeah it's funny it's funny on the her her entry for john reese davies like the only movies i've seen him in are yeah. Indiana jones one and three lord of the rings aladdin three jungle book two maybe yeah they're this whole like, big list i'm like still a lot only. yeah i'm like <laughs> only huh <laughs> both guys have been around for a while so yes. yeah the, mm-hmm. the resume is a bit long but yeah yes yeah the we have our wheelhouses and you can kind of see where our priorities yes. lie when it comes to consumption of media. Mm-hmm. Indeed. Yes. yes. Yeah. Um, oh. And then uh, she followed up with, oops, sorry. Um, uh, another movie that she thinks of the Chip and Dale movie it, might be in the similar vein is the movie Free Guy, which I know is now on Disney Plus and yes. I have not watched it I yet. Apparently it's actually one. quite good. <laughs> so, yeah, I told Jared yeah. that and he's he was like, Yeah, I'd want to watch it. Are you talking about talking about it for the podcast? I'm like, mm, no, we're talking about Hercules, but I thought you wanted to watch it. And he's like, Oh, we'll do it later. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, we're yeah. it is it is it's on, on our, the list. I it's on the list. Yes. I just yeah, it's like I have, that list is just insane. Yeah, <laughs> like, I need to watch yeah. this. I need to yeah, watch and this. now looking at the calendar, but, and it's like, oh, it's March. Oh, it's March seventh. Like the Academy Awards are in like two weeks, three weeks. I can't count. We've got to discuss our picks. Yeah, I was, yeah. I was, well, I think we leave. We've got some time. We've got like two yeah. weeks yeah. to make our picks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I gotta watch some more stuff before I can make it choose. See, so, yeah. see, I'm yeah. here. Yeah. I'll watch as many as I want so far. You, I, you come to a point where you're just like, okay, I'm just gonna throw a dart and see where it lands. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Coin flip. Yeah. This isn't like 2019, so <laughs> yeah. Where it was all in our favor. <laughs> I know. It yeah. was Black Panther and Bohemian Rhapsody everywhere. Rhapsody. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Since then, not quite so much. Not so much. No. So. Anyway, thank you, Shalane, for your feedback. Mm-hmm. As always. So, yes. On to this week's main topic where we get to discuss a well it would be classic because it's not old enough to be classic but well retro a, for us a, at this a, point 20 a classic is 25 years our, 25 yeah. years enough to be considered retro a classic from our childhood <laughs> well okay childhood. retro when, when you know i was growing up in the 90s retro was the 70s so i mean i was 14 when this movie was released so hmm. Yeah, I was I was going into 
my freshman year of high school in 97. So <laughs> for, for I was me. a junior in high school. So yeah. Yeah, for was, me, it was like that bubble. I was 12. So I was not, I was just at a, you know, elementary school in the middle yeah. school. And so it's kind of like, it's kind of that border, that borderline for me of, you know, I saw it when I was a little kid, but I wasn't a little, little kid. It's not like Little Mermaid, where I mm, saw that one when right. I was four. <laughs> yeah. I was but, a, yeah. Yeah. Around the perfect age, like kind of like the high, I was seven. Yeah. So I was like, about the right age for it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I so. still, I, I mean, we still saw it and loved it. And at the time, you know, speaking of Shalane, she was a baby. And it was just <laughs> funny because she was just so adorable. And we call, you know, we like, oh, look, baby Hercules looks just like little Shalane. Aww. <laughs> yeah. Aww. And so I always think about that when I see that. I'm like, oh, that's when yeah. Shalane was a baby. <laughs> yeah. Well, and yes, regardless I, I, of what label you want to use on generationally how old this movie is, um, I do like, you know, it's always fun to do these Disney movies that we remember fondly from when we were younger. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. uh, even more so when they're the ones that have like historical, even if it's not necessarily true historical, but they yeah. have ties to something that is really old <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so then it's and fun to do that to look into the source material for for what it is in this case it's the story of hercules which uh, i've had fun going down the youtube rabbit hole <laughs> of watching various various videos of talking about the various it, it depends what language you were reading and writing at the time mm -hmm. uh the variations of the story of of hercules and even yeah. his how his name is pronounced right well uh -huh. well because so. hercules is the way the romans said it yeah. but and greek mm -hmm. is heracles but yes. at, like people mm -hmm. even before this movie came out they knew it as hercules so that's yeah. what they mm -hmm. kept and and honestly yes we're gonna get this out of the way it is this movie is definitely not the traditional story of not you know, hercules oh, no. from greek mythology mm -hmm. yeah. so yep. you know if that's a hang-up for it, you it's it's not even it's fanfic it, it is fanfic <laughs> it, it i mean just greek mythology in general this is very <laughs> very very sanitized yeah. <laughs> this, this is hercules yeah. for kids like okay so this yes. movie came out and then i think a year or two later there was an animated version of hercules and xena that we watched a lot uh -huh. and that i just sounds remember about right yeah i remember kevin, watching that kevin, yeah, kevin sorbo and, and lucy lawless they, i mean it was lawless, animated yes. but they gave they they did the the voices and i'm like wait a minute this is not because I, at the time I was not well versed in Greek mythology, I really didn't really know that much about it. And then I was so like, wait, wait a minute, what? He, who? What? Hera and Zeus and what? The, mm -hmm. What the heck? I don't know. Ares. Like, Ares. <laughs> what? What the heck is this even going on? But now I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, it was it was the Disney version, which is fine, as long as you realize it's the Disney version and you can enjoy it. For yes. what it is, and I that and being I said, absolutely do enjoy <laughs> it for what it is. Disney, the the animators and the script writers again did a really good job about putting references in there, mm -hmm. kind of like Romeo and Juliet, where if yes. you know the source material, you're going to be like, oh, that's very funny. Yes, if you're yes. an adult, and it's going to go right over your little kid's head, so you don't have to worry about them being traumatized by uh you know said references you know like yes. when after hercules and meg have their day out and he's talking about everything and he's like oh you know we did this and this and oh that play that oedipus thing and i thought i had problems yeah <laughs> so so you know there it is the joke the joke for the adults who probably read oedipus in high school if not college yeah and then the kids are just like oh this is fun and they're being cute together and Oh, is it, and it, you know, and that's that is Disney. Well, definitely Disney Renaissance. Yeah, because mm -hmm. Hercules is in in that mode, even though it's 
might not be considered part of it. It's getting towards the end because at this point Katzenberg had left. Mm -hmm. Um, and actually, uh, according to the trivia on IMDb, uh, supposedly some of, um, Hades more dramatic traits are based on, based on Jeffrey Katzenberg. (laughs) Oh my. Some some of Hades' more diva-like moments uh, yes. were taken and then a from lot, the people that yeah. knew Jeffrey yeah. when he used to work there. So. Yeah, although a lot of it was just James Woods improvising and just doing his yeah, thing. Yeah, he pretty much improvised the role mm-hmm. even yeah, even once they gave him a her, uh, Hades was supposed to be way more serious and more mm-hmm. like scary like you know like an Ursula or maybe you know Corella DeVille type evil character but then James Wood gets into the recording booth and just starts so they are like frantically rewriting the script to make it <laughs> fit more this persona that he's giving Hades and he's like oh thanks throws it over his shoulder and keeps ad-libbing you know he went pretty, very pretty Robin much. Williams <laughs> with Hades like Robin did with Jeannie. <laughs> so. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. And it's like, because I, I was reading one bit where, like, the, you know, they were when they were first casting Hades and, you know, they went through all these different people and they, you know, they were like doing the big booming God imperious voice, like I'm the mm-hmm. villain and everything. And, and, and James Wood comes in and just says, hey, name's Hades, Lord of the Dead. Hi, how you doing? And they're like, oh, that's our guy. Mm-hmm. And then, and so that's kind of where that whole, where the <laughs> yeah. character came from is him just kind of being, uh, well, I, okay. So I remember at the time, like Disney Channel had this show called Movie Surfers. Maybe some of you of a certain age will, will remember this. Yep. <laughs> the, yeah, the conceit was it was all these kids mm-hmm. that were chatting online together and they were learning about the behind the scenes of certain Disney movies. They did one for Hercules. And so there was, you know, an interview with James Woods and he was talking about how, you know, Hades, he's a quick talker. He likes to schmooze a little. And I'm just, I just always remember that, that interview when I watch this movie and I'm just like, yeah, that, yep. <laughs> it's like, and there, there's just certain things. It's that. And the scene when Hercules has like sliced the, the, the head off the Hydra right away it's just kind of laying there with no head and it looks like a big ham Mm -hmm. well one of the kids you know as as a joke on the show was like rewinding it back and forth so like it would fall and then grow out heads again but then he rewind it like oh now it's lost its heads now they now they're grown back and now they've lost it and i'm like okay that's kind of funny but also a little gross yeah (laughs) but they they were they were talking up the cg in the in the of the hydro which was kind yeah. of funny but yeah so that was so yeah it's just there's a lot of things that were just really fun with all that yeah so well let's um kind of back up a little well a little let's back up a lot to ancient greece uh <laughs> yes as we do years before 1997 uh <laughs> just a bit just a little bit uh with the the actual source material of hercules or heracles or you know he's had lots of names again depending on which um yeah story you read translation uh, and years and just different cultures over time yeah the 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 general consensus at the very least is he is the son of zeus because zeus Mm -hmm. was the god equivalent of albert einstein really (laughs) love the ladies yes Uh, especially human ladies even though there are plenty of goddesses for him to schmooze with you know and he's married yeah. to Hera of all people but he really liked the human ladies um and so in one version well most versions he takes a liking to this one particular woman disguises himself as her husband they get it on she gets pregnant nine months later bada bing bada boom you've got a baby there are some versions yeah. where Zeus gets her pregnant and then her husband comes home that night they get it on as well so she ends up pregnant with twins obviously not identical twins fraternal twins because two separate fertilizations two different 
you know, how that works. Um, so, but again, so many months later, two babies and, you know, they're, because they're brand new babies are like, well, one of these is Zeus's and one of these is my mortal husband's. I'm not sure which one. Meanwhile, Hera finds out what her husband did and was like, <laughs> well, we're not going to have that. So she sends these poisonous snakes down to the nursery to kill the babies. She figures just kill them both that way. You know, if it, it, I, there's no way I can get the wrong one. They hear cry, you know, the, the human parents hear crying, run to the nursery. The mortal baby is there crying up a storm. The other baby, who we now know is the son of Zeus, has strangled said poisonous snakes. <laughs> so so mm-hmm. that that is referenced in the movie where yes. you know the yeah, they just turned Hercules mortal and pain and panic turn into these snakes and he's gonna attack him and he just grabs him, strangles him and throws him and just looks up like I'm the cutest darn thing you've ever seen in your life. And he's mm-hmm. yep. right. <laughs> so 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 there's one bit where you know that the myth the myth comes into the story of the animated story in in a certain way yeah Mm -hmm. Yeah. and then again depending on what version you talk to hercules he grows up Mm -hmm. uh he's very strong um that strength gets him into trouble because he didn't know his own strength but supposedly at one point He's taking music lessons and his teacher makes him mad. So he takes this, his lyre, you know, the, the lyrical guitar the, harp thing. The harp. <laughs> yes. Bangs it over the music teacher's head, but does it so hard he kills the music teacher. Oh, damn. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> uh, so, but uh, eventually he grows up and uh, goes off to, to live his own life um he he does meet a woman named magira who he ends up marrying and having apparently a crap ton of kids with um and uh again hera is jealous because her husband's spawn that he had with another woman is alive and you know in a happy marriage with lots of kids having a great life so she um puts a spell on him makes him go crazy he ends up killing his kids and in one version meg um and uh he's once the madness goes away he realizes what he done he's so distraught so he goes to this oracle and is like you know i've done this horrible horrible thing how can i you know fix it and um she's like the, the oracle is all like well you gotta it, it, again it depends on the story at one point he goes into slavery um he gives himself as a slave to someone for a year um he ends up meeting and marrying another woman um so the meg in the movie is actually a combination of like all four of hercules's wives that he had uh because he had three mortal wives um and then when he eventually dies and goes to mount olympus with the gods um he ends up marrying technically his half sister but i guess when you're a god it, well genetics don't matter the um, well <laughs> zeus zeus and hera were or, you know technically siblings so it yeah. yeah there's there's a lot that just the, there's a lot of our modern sensibilities when you read these stories you're like that sounds so weird but to them back then it's like perfectly it perfect normal. sense and it's not yep. it's not bad or better or anything like that it just is different so yep. mm-hmm. and then, so you have to remember when you're reading these ancient stories it was different and yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. but i'm the, sure there's the, stuff that if it went from from our time period if it went back in time it would be weird to them yeah yeah um but at one point he uh finds himself in trouble and has to kind of you know wipe the slate slate clink i like you know natasha he's got red in his ledger he's trying to you know he's trying to you know clear it um and that's when he gets the the 12 what becomes the 12 labors now i didn't know this because i've always like oh the 12 labors of hercules but 
Actually, it's supposed to be 10. Problem is, two of them got disqualified, so you end up having to do two more. <laughs> That's yes. why it's 12. I did not know that. Yeah, they really like, oh, yeah they they really put him through the through his paces on, on yeah. those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which they they show in like visual representations of a lot of them in in the movie, like the the, the Nemean lion. Um, obviously, we see him defeat the Hydra, which is one of the the labors that got disqualified because he had help. He had a nephew help him. Uh, so that one get disqualified. Uh, the the oh, I'm gonna butcher a lot of these. I'm so sorry. The Aramanthian boar, we see that yeah you know, on the side of a pot at one point. Mm. I think one of my favorite is when Phil, while Hercules is getting like his portrait painted, <laughs> and Phil is going over his schedule for the day, and one of them is he has to go to visit the amazons and get a girdle <laughs> mm -hmm. yes and it yeah so again if you if you're versed in greek mythology all these little hints of you gotta go get a girdle from some amazons yeah <laughs> it's just, it was a bit more complicated than that <laughs> well yes mm -hmm. i mean just he didn't lately. necessarily have to kill hippolyta it just happened in the end you know everything kind of spiraled out of control <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he could have just gotten the girdle and just kind of left but no the amazons were like ah he's here to enslave us and the fight broke out and hippolyta got killed in the process you know how it goes sometimes yeah you know mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> these things happen yeah mm -hmm. no biggie yeah <laughs> uh, yeah but yeah, I was. Uh, I found that quite interesting when watching the various YouTube videos. They're like, "Yeah, it was twelve. It was twelve labors, but really, he only needed to do ten. It's just some of them got disqualified. So, like, oh, okay, <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, it's it's Greek mythology. You kind of just it gets a little bonkers at times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah and obviously <laughs> not just with hercules but with greek mythology in general mm -hmm. it's oh, it's yeah. it can be very i mean the the stories are kind of supposed to be you know in a way parables you know they're supposed to like teach people certain morals and certain ideas deals like the whole idea with hercules who you know he's essentially a god and it has all this strength and is you know revered by so many people but even people who are seemingly the most amazing people ever could still screw up yes mm -hmm. well <laughs> that's the story of greek mythology in, in general, stop. In general. Yeah. yeah um that's true <laughs> yeah but i mean it's yeah it's it's just you know all these these stories these myths folklore i mean the, every culture has has them to one degree or another and it's mm -hmm. just these ones and you know greek the you know greek culture you know spiraled down to roman culture and then that's kind of where western civilization spawned from more or less so I mean that's kind of why we have that connection to it. So mm -hmm. it's it's kind of I don't want to say it's on par with with fairy tales like Snow White and stuff, but it's it's kind of that same thing. Like these are all stories that we know um, because they're you know it's all connected to our sort of collective cultural psyche mm -hmm. in a sense. Yeah. This is like you know that bad idea you kind of had that you thought might be good to try? Well, here, read this and what, and then hold mm -hmm. the character's beer while you're their <laughs> beer for mm -hmm. to read. Right. <laughs> Rethink that. <laughs> but in, in, yeah, Disney's animated movie is really just one of a bazillion. Oh yeah 
I- iterations mm-hmm. of Hercules in art in general. I mean, he's been the subject mm-hmm. matter of so many paintings and sculptures and you know, all going back to the era that he in, in theory should be from, you know, mm-hmm. uh you know, ancient Rome and uh you know, just in Italy, which I mean, considering in theory it's he's dates back to ancient rome which is in italy so i guess mm-hmm. yeah it's the hometown guy um but just in italy in the 50s and 60s there were 19 movies made about hercules just in italy <laughs> Oof. <Wowza>. yeah <laughs> hey. so yeah he's kind of a big deal (laughs) a little bit yeah well it's that whole i mean you know this goes back to i can't remember who was um one of the original one of the uh guys who wrote superman comics you know more you know more recent ones um he even said like he he saw this movie and it was like you know this is one of the best superman movies (laughs) i've ever seen and he actually wrote (laughs) superman comics um so it's like like you know those ideas of superheroes and things like that that comes from you know the, the these myths and mythology so you know for you know to to do the story for you know in you know the late 90s for for sort of modern audiences it's like well you guys know superman you know that kind of whole thing you know and he's a sort of aw shucks country boy and goes to the big city to mm-hmm. you know try to <laughs> do some good and you know become a hero and he meets this 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 woman who's a little you know a bit more worldly has had had some more experiences and life's knocked her down a little bit more than than normal than you'd like but you know but then he's like just so in earnest and he just wants to help (laughs) and you love Mm -hmm. him for it even though he kind of he get he's he's kind of naive at at the beginning but he Mm -hmm. still he does he still does does a lot of good so it's like when when i saw that i was like oh yeah it is totally a superman a version of superman Mm -hmm. (laughs) without even needing to be which i think is great because i love superman Mm -hmm. actually i think i like this more than superman (laughs) well yes (laughs) But that's just me. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, the like the uh, the um, not necessarily the moral of the story, but you know, when Hercules goes to try and figure out, you know, his origin story because he doesn't know what it is in the mm-hmm. movie um that he gets to talk to his father via big ass statue uh, <laughs> it's, it's a good thing yeah. that it's a good thing james woods did what he did for hades because you could i don't think you could have two characters that are like the big booming and the big booming fits really well for zeus <laughs> yes it does yes. Yeah. Um, that, that's mm-hmm. kind of you know what you when you you know think of zeus that's what you think of is he's the you know got the great big voice and he's the king of the gods and 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 all that so yeah it's yeah. definitely your charleston heston's and your sean connor yes those which voices. which i had totally forgotten charleston heston is the guy who is the narrator at the beginning mm-hmm. um, you know, get to narrate muses. for a whole like 10 seconds before yes. the, the muses are still- like it's, Hold on, honey. <laughs> it's still Moses. Like, come on. I know. <laughs> which is still, which is funny. You got, you got, you know, Moses <laughs> um, narrating a story about uh, Greek mythology. Yeah, it still cracks me up. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, yeah, but you know, the, he, uh, um, yeah. Uh, hercules has this um conversation with his his father and um yeah his father's like well you can rejoin us if you can prove that you're a true hero and 
you hear the word hero and yeah throughout throughout the rest of the film yeah hercules does a lot of heroic things Mm -hmm. which you know to them like because when he first shows up in thebes and all those people are like you know there was the locusts and the floods and the earthquakes and we need we need someone to help us with with all these things and so yeah to him he's like oh yeah i can help because i have super strength and i know how to you know do these things and, Mm -hmm. and you know help to help so your 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 cities and your homes aren't going to be completely wrecked all the time mm-hmm. and that's that's in his mind that's what heroes are supposed to do exactly mm-hmm. exactly but the, the the problem is is he's trying to be a true hero because he has to be a true hero mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. get back to olympus when the but because his motivation is if i do these things i'll get to go back with my family it's not really true heroism yeah he's not being selfless he's not doing it because it is genuinely for someone else he's doing it because oh i yeah this is for me you know and you know and, and there's that scene where he goes back to zeus and is like i'm an action figure and i you know i've done all these things he's like well you're not you're not there yet you haven't shown and he's like what do i even well, what else do i even have to do and he's like sorry you got to figure this one out yourself mm-hmm. and it, in the end he the the reason that he he succeeds is because he stopped thinking about himself and you know it's not it's not that what he wanted was was bad necessarily it was that it was just for him and not for you know not for anybody else mm-hmm. yeah and, and you know the fact that's that what he, makes a difference <laughs> yeah and and the fact that he and and meg were in love yeah that's fine <laughs> not that meg will admit it <laughs> i know that song i don't know how many times i rewound it when i was when i'd re- when i'd watch this show watch this movie because i loved it i don't know i don't know which part i liked singing the most whether it was meg's part or the muses part but i sang that song over and <laughs> over and over again because i loved it so much and when i when i took when i took uh uh, singing lessons i was like how do i figure out how to sing this song in a recital Mm -hmm. (laughs) because i i didn't have anyone to do a duet with or anything but it never happened but oh i love it i love that song Mm -hmm. which i know everybody else like loves go the distance but no i love i love i won't see i win love it's which is is a good song in and of itself and it has it has its it's uh it's place i know it's a it's a very uh popular song on people's playlists that do the run disney events oh yeah i mean i've I've heard it at like marathons and stuff graduations and stuff like that and yeah yeah very you know especially back then and everybody they if they had a musical number they sang go the distance yeah (laughs) (laughs) yeah what's interesting for this being a animated disney you know kind of you know that disney renaissance era movie it doesn't actually have a lot of musical numbers no it doesn't like there's no like you have the opening with the muses Mm -hmm. hercules has one song go the distance yeah Mm -hmm. like like phil has his one song meg has her one song yeah hades doesn't even have a villain song yeah i would love to see what they would have done for a a villain song for him yeah that would have been hilarious (laughs) yes Yes. (laughs) although although i don't know i don't know how good of a singer james woods is so you know with with danny devito singing which i'm not complaining about his singing because his his voice works for that song and and the and the Mm -hmm. character but Mm -hmm. i don't know if I mean, it, it, it'd have to be like on par with with friend like me, and I don't know if they could have pulled it yeah. off. But maybe I don't know. Yeah, never say never. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. And they could have gone someone else because like, they did that a lot. Like someone would did we have like two voice actors, one for voice and one for mm-hmm. singing. Well, that, that was true. even the case in this. I mean, the Hercules is 
singing voice is a different person than his speaking voice and yeah actually young hercules versus grown-up hercules are two different voice actors so mm -hmm. um so yeah i mean it's not the the end of the world for for disney to do that they just decided not mm -hmm. to go that route which you know once again when you have alan menken doing your music you just kind of let him go <laughs> Yeah, he knows how to do what he knows how to do best. <laughs> yeah. He kind of knows what he's doing. True. Um, although we could have gotten a slightly different soundtrack if they had gotten their original choice for the muses, which was the Spice Girls. I read that. I was like, excuse me. <laughs> I know, and I'm like, well, <laughs> if they'd gotten them, I mean, okay, because this was the time period that I was also I was into Spice Girls. I do not. I, I I do not regret it at all. I was middle Same. school. That was oh me too. Was I thing. was a huge Spice mm -hmm. yeah. Girl fan. Oh yeah, like Same. I had I, I bought like all these photographs, put it in my locker, and all this stuff. And I, I had was... boots that had a platform that had to have been four inches thick. Yes. <laughs> wow. So and it was just kind of it was the sort of thing. So you know, if they had gotten the Spice Girls at the time, we would have been just like, okay, yeah, they have the Spice Girls. That's great. But now, like thinking about it, like I don't know that it would have worked quite quite so well. I don't know. Yeah. If it would have been, I don't know if it would have been the same. Yeah, because but... it probably wouldn't have had the gospel feel to it. Because I don't right. think that's something necessarily of the Spice Girls that's not in their purview. I mean, they probably could have tried, but you know, it, it's not necessarily their wheelhouse. Meanwhile, having the muses and having this very kind of Southern Baptist gospel feel to it you know you you could just see the muses if they were human in the modern day at some church in the deep south with their yeah. big hats you know just yeah. shaking that the tambourine <laughs> which mm -hmm. honestly i mean now that i think about it if they had gotten the the spice girls to do it it would have dated the movie really really badly it would yeah. have it would not yeah. have been as i mean some of the cgi is a little bit off but not as bad as i thought it was going to be when i watched it this this time i was like oh yeah they had the cgi hydra and all this like oh it's gonna look awful actually it didn't so i mean as far as you know uh, uh, you know a movie looking looking dated looking old it really it, there are a few moments but not as much as i thought it would be and i yeah. feel like if mm -hmm. they had gotten the spice girls that probably would have that probably would have made it like definitely a, a, a product of its time <laughs> which yeah. i mean is... yeah. i mean disney already was doing that with mm -hmm. these renaissance era movies where they would take like the one hit song from the movie yeah. in this case go the distance and have like a radio version that could be played on regular radio and it was played recorded. over and over, usually recorded and by over. popular artists artists of the time in this case it was go the distance sung by michael bolton oh yes. that's right mm -hmm. so. uh, yeah and <laughs> and there was a whole music video for it which actually wasn't mm -hmm. too bad it just was yeah. no all it was i mean all they, there was a, a pop version of beauty and the beast that got played on the radio yeah. which was celine dion and mm, i can't remember people bryson the, yeah yeah um a whole new world had one yeah 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 I don't so think, i don't think lion king had one if it if they did it would have been Candy i think Field it was just tonight. Candy Field of love night with elton john which i mean right that has yeah. and not circle aged, of life it's elton john so yeah <laughs> I know, because now I'm like going down the list, like who else did they have? I mean, and then Tarzan was Phil Collins, obviously. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah. Although apparently the Spanish version of the film Go the Distance was done by Ricky Martin. Mm -hmm. Oh my. Again, of <laughs> yep. the time. Yes. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> and Go the Distance did get nominated for Best Original Song for uh, both the Golden Globes and the Academy Awards. But this was 1997, and you were nobody could <laughs> nobody could hold a candle to Celine Dion in that giant sinking ship. Yeah, Titanic. Uh -huh. Titanic cleaned up that year. Let's just say. Yeah. Although yep. it didn't win everything that it was nominated for, I will. 
hold Thank on to that fact. Goodness. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Although uh, it, it has it has come around in my estimation a little bit since oh. then, but that's another topic for another day and another podcast. Soon to be appearing on Gold Standard, the Oscars podcast. Yes, <laughs> that one. Mm-hmm. And by soon, I mean sometime next year, probably. probably. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. And I, I I may or may not be appearing on it. I did I did message Nick and say I would be interested in discussing this one. So it's like I am taking my number from my place in line, please and thank you. <laughs> mm-hmm. Pretty much. Yeah. Um. So. Yeah, because uh, like I said, I was fourteen. Yeah, I was going into high school when this movie was released, so I was slightly out of the age bracket that would have been catered to as far as advertising and stuff. Obviously, mm-hmm. uh, Brittany was in that sweet spot. Brittany, did you ever find those plates? I did not. Because like, we just recently moved, and the, I know which and i know what you're talking about i'm sure i I could find a a picture on google of somebody oh yeah they definitely i've seen them like on google yeah but that was that mcdonald's or burger king it's mcdonald's yeah because for a while disney and mcdonald's were like buddies like every thing that came out they were joined at the hip yes yeah it was it was Disney for a while, McDonald's they, and yeah, Coke. for a while there kind they, the they kind of Trinity. split and they went to Burger yeah. King and then they came back. Uh, and then there was a little bit with Pizza Hut. Yeah. The Disney McDonald's relationship has been a little tumultuous over the years. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But I, I just I just remember there was that the, that that period of time in the late nineties where it was like Disney and McDonald's and Coke were like this holy trinity of of merchandising. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah. Um. And let's see. What else? Um. Uh. Of course, this being the the mid to late nineties, there was a tie-in video game. Oh yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Apparently, it was created hard for as the balls. PC and PlayStation. Um, I do remember getting the Hercules print pack. <laughs> oh yeah, I know. I know. You could make your own greeting cards. You could make your own business cards <laughs> with Hercules uh, characters. <laughs> yes, with, with, uh, with Phil and the nice Hercules font. I still have them around. It's just you know they don't they print they some of those out and hand them out are. at the next convention. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could, but. They don't that would be work. Awesome. It doesn't yeah. emulate anymore. I can't. Oh, bummer. <laughs> oh, no. That's yeah. what Photoshop is for. Uh, uh-huh. Although Disney might complain. But whatever. Well, yeah. it's, it's, you know. Um, and uh, Hercules was also the first Disney on Ice <sighs> adaptation before the film was actually theatrical released. <laughs> Interesting. That one oh. I missed. Yeah. Oh, Disney on Ice. I, I saw it never once. seen it live. <laughs> I saw it. I did oh, too. I, I was, it wasn't I the was, Hercules. I, th- I would think yeah. it was more the g- generic, like, here's a whole bunch yeah. of Disney characters. It's a familiar Same. Disney music. Yep. Yeah, that's I, the Disney and Ice I remember seeing. Yeah, I, you know, I Mickey, went, Minnie, Donald, Goofy. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember seeing one, but I was, I mean, I was older. I was in high school probably, and it was definitely for little little kids. And I was like, wow, uh, you know, because I mean, I'd I'd seen the ads all growing up, and I was like, oh, I want to. Yeah, I was see probably Disney seven or eight when I saw it, so. Yeah, I think we went like uh, again. You know, Shalane was 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 probably of of the age. My my two younger sisters, Allison and Shalane, were that was their thing, and I was there. And I'm like, oh my gosh, there's like all these little girls in the princess dresses, and this is kind of not for me. And mm-hmm. I, was old I was like, oh, I thought this. Was. <laughs> I was in a weird situation where I was a you know oldest of you know like we we ranged you know from there was a 10 a 10 year 
age gap between me and the youngest and so like we would go to things and I you know I'd see, go see all the kid movies and all the things and it was a while before I was I was able to go to more uh, more teenage adult sorts of things just because more your age bracket yeah more my age bracket because well I didn't have a car and uh I really didn't know what the heck I was doing, which is sort of, yeah. you know, the story. If when you're in middle school, that's the story of your life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, it's, yeah. yeah. So it was, it was interesting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Good old Disney on ice. <laughs> now it's on Disney Plus, but I have not watched it. But have any of you guys watched the cartoon TV series? I remember Not watching it yet. Uh, when it was on, I, I wonder if it's any good. On, it's interesting. It is. It very much. I pretty, I'm pretty sure I either watched it on Disney Channel or Saturday Morning Cartoons when it was on ABC. Um, but I mean, there was you know the direct to DVD quote unquote sequel, which is the first three episodes smashed together with a framing device. Mm-hmm. Um, Basically, it, it, it takes place when Hercules is, is training with Phil, so he's a teenager, and he goes to high school, or, you know, the Greek yeah. equivalent of high school. Mm-hmm. It's basically high school with a Greek <laughs> coat of paint. And it's a little weird because Hades knows who he is, and he's trying to, to kill him, even though in the movie, Hades doesn't know that Hercules survived until he shows up as an adult. So mm-hmm. there's a little bit of, there's a bit of a, a, a plot hole there. But then again, it's James Woods playing Hades, and apparently he show anytime Hades is in anything, well, anything. Well, they any- call yeah. him up, and he's like, I'm yeah. there, I'll be right there." Which is why he's yeah. in. Uh, I think it's Kingdom Hearts has yep. like Hercules all over the place because yeah. James Woods loves to play Hercules, and I do not blame the man mm-hmm. because Hades is a and it's fun too bad. character. They couldn't have gotten him to play the Hades in Once Upon a Time. Not right? that the other guy that they cast cast to play Hades wasn't anything yeah. to see that but I would have in my opinion I would have rather have seen James what yep. yeah James although Wilson, I wonder Bobby Carlisle my gosh that would have yes. been I know. that would have been although, something part of me wonders if like he would have been a little too old for what they wanted in the show so I, I can cover him in blue yeah. makeup but never tell the difference right exactly that, that is true that is true but at the same time I'm like oh come on guys you need to you need to do this yeah but they didn't, and it was a bit of a missed opportunity. But yeah, but yeah so so I mean, and I think, so I think like all of us like guessing like, and I think you know he still is you know, whenever there's an opportunity to him for him to play the character, he does it mm-hmm. even now. Oh I don't yeah, know what I don't know if they've they've done anything recently, but I don't yeah. think too recently. I mean, even when they were making the movie they're still in production and he was enjoying himself so much and they were starting to go over budget he offered to give them back his paycheck and do it for free wow <laughs> that uh, is now awesome. that's saying something yeah. right there that and they were grand. like thanks but we'll find some extra pennies somewhere uh, <laughs> <laughs> and they ended up going over budget but the movie ended up being a huge success so then they didn't care anymore, yeah so yeah i mean it wasn't i mean it was it was still a little bit it wasn't you know to the to the degree of like you know lion king but it was still it it did it did fairly well yeah yeah so it uh let's see here um paul schaefer as hermes oh my yeah (laughs) (laughs) (sighs) yeah it's it's opening weekend it didn't do too well but it was a very limited release um but it i mean when i say limited it, it's opening it began as a limited release in north america playing in one theater and it made oh, wow. a quarter of a million dollars that weekend that's nothing so to sneeze at that's not nothing <laughs> no. to sneeze at so um yeah. and then it expanded to two theaters and Ooh. made 1.45 million so when it got its general release, it made twenty one point five million dollars. So, um, ching to ching, yeah, yeah, it, that's, that's not bad. I mean, it was 
it was less than what was projected. They were figuring 125 to 150 million, similar to Aladdin, but it ended up doing more Pocahontas money. <laughs> yeah, which Pocahontas, well, we did our review on that. Yes, already, we have so. talked about Pocahontas. Yes. So. yes. So so go go check that out for our thoughts on that. But yeah, you know. Yeah. I'm um, wondering if that limited light limited release then shoot them shoot them in the foot. It is possible. It could be. Um, there were uh, some other not not cartoons, but uh, other films that it was competing against because that was also when Men in Black opened. Uh, oh. And Batman and that Robin. Would... Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Batman well, and Robin. Um, Men in unless Black. Unless we um, talk about the bat yeah. nipples and the bat credit card. Game. Well, yeah. Um, at, at the time, still. at the time, <laughs> Batman and Robin was was the shiz. If yes, I may, if I uh-huh. may be so bold as to say, but yeah, yeah you're right. <laughs> and it, Men in so... Black was. Oh yeah. my gosh, Men in Black was cool. amazing, and it still yeah. is. Yeah, it's, it yeah. holds up. Yes, I, I yeah. watch Men in Black quite often. Yeah, quite a few yeah. times. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, '97. That was just. It was an amazing year for movies. Quite, quite frankly, yeah. and mm-hmm. it just. You know, Hercules just. I guess if it had come out in a different year, it might have, might have been a little bit more than than it was. But for for the year and what it and what it was competing against, it it didn't do so bad. So you know, I'm I'm not gonna, Mm-mm. I'm not gonna judge it for that. Yeah, I mean, it's nothing yeah. to sneeze at. Uh, it it, and... it held its own. Yeah, and like we said, this was this was still technically the Disney Renaissance, but this was the end of the Disney Renaissance, right? So v- very much. All so. that, all that, yeah. You know, they were, uh, you know, on cloud nine going into 1990. Um, but yeah, after things like Pocahontas and some other films didn't do as well as as expected. Um, the, yeah. You know, once you're at the top, there's only one the way to go, but down. On the horizon. So yeah, yeah. But with with Katzenberg leaving, and we've talked yeah. about that. When we talk about the Eisner era and all the shady stuff going on there, with you know Jeffrey being able to leave with essentially the Disney lineup in his brain, <laughs> so right. they could go over to film DreamWorks mm-hmm. and be like, "Hey, let's make hey, a movie with here's- bugs in it." <laughs> Uh, yes pretty much and let's make it very yeah. similar to a bug's life yeah right yeah that was that that was that that rivalry was was heating up so you know mm-hmm. as as it as it does but you know it was i mean it's still such a fun movie like like i said i i hadn't yeah. i hadn't watched it in a in a fair number of years and i was just kind of trying to and i you know last night i was just sitting with alex watching it and i was like oh let's, let's bring it up and alex had actually fallen asleep watching something else that we were doing and he'd fallen asleep on me on the couch i'm like well i ain't getting up so <laughs> luckily i had right. i was in front of the tv that had disney plus so <laughs> we just watched it and then he woke up in the middle and he didn't really i mean clearly he didn't know what was going on but he just kind of sat there and just enjoyed it for, for what oh, it was good. so he yeah i mean he it, and, and he is the type of kid where if he if you're watching something that he has zero interest in or if he's bored he'll let you know <laughs> he's not <laughs> he's not shy about saying now nah, I, I, he'll like want to watch you know a, a you know luigi's mansion on on um youtube uh, one of those videos <laughs> but he just kind of sat there and just was so engrossed by it and i thought i mean because we were getting to the end with the you know he gets the titans out and he's gonna you know attack olympus and we're getting to there and i thought he might be a little scared no he just he watched it mm, cool. so that was great so so my 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 four-year-old who you know he's 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 a uh, he he wasn't born he wasn't alive in 97 obviously yeah but he he it met with his approval so yay yeah and uh eventually (laughs) world circumstances notwithstanding eventually there's going to be a broadway production 
with Alan because, Menken at the helm, of course. So they did a they did a you know what they had developed up to that point in, in a, a small show pre pandemic, but obviously once the pandemic started, that put the halter on things, and now Alan Menken's working on Disenchanted. Uh, <laughs> so, but once once he's done with that, and he's working on some other things, but yeah, there is supposed to be a full blown Broadway production coming eventually. <laughs> I'm kind of surprised yeah. it took this long, honestly. Yeah. Well, Hades can finally get that villain song. Yes, mm -hmm. it's like they please. <laughs> It's just kind of funny because I, I I don't remember if I ever mentioned this, but someone pointed out that between the after Hunchback and Notre Dame, there wasn't another villain song until Princess and the Frog. Huh. Ooh, now that you oh. mentioned it. That's well, right. well, in the yeah. in the Disney, you know, the Disney animated that's canon, right. I, I should specify, but yeah. Mm -hmm. but yeah, I was like, oh, that is really? a very good villain song, though. <laughs> it is a very good <laughs> song. I do love friends. Friends on the other side is a really good villain song. Yes, so. yes, it is. But it's like you know because um, the the one in, in Hunchback was you know Hellfire, and it's like yeah, wow, like that's that's the last one they did until two thousand nine. Is that when Princess Frog came out? I can't remember now. But yeah, uh, it's like like when yeah when they <laughs> that was pointed out, I was like, holy crap, you're right. <laughs> but anyway, but yeah, so hopefully hopefully Hades gets a good a good villain song that would be awesome mm. so anyway so yeah hercules it's a fun fun movie and it, i think it's i think it's getting more more appreciation as, as time goes on i not that mm -hmm. not that people hated it at the time but it kind of was just kind of there it wasn't really you know it wasn't mm -hmm. an aladdin or it wasn't a lion king you know it just it kind of it didn't really people didn't seem to make an impact and again that's partly because of the year it came out and what else came out that year but it's yeah it's still now now like people can you know watch it on video or streaming and they're like oh yeah i remember this and the songs and it was so much fun and mm -hmm. and yeah and like i said it's not it's not greek mythology too much but it's not supposed to be so you you enjoy it for for what it is and not what it's not yeah exactly and now that i'm older and you know have learned more about that greek mythology i you know rewatching it again especially after doing some of the research and, you know learning more about the 12 labors and i'm like some mm -hmm. of those visual gags i'm like oh okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yep i love i just love what they do you know they do stuff like that they put stuff in there for the adults and for the kids and the fun thing is is if you watch it as a kid you can watch it again as an adult and it's still going to be fun but for a whole other reason because yes the mm -hmm. stuff that went over your head when you were little yep and you kind of think oh yes. my gosh my mom let me watch this well i didn't get it then so it's probably fine mm-hmm <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I don't, this one it wasn't like it wasn't a bad joke it was like a joke i didn't get when i first watched it but i remember i was probably like 16 and i was babysitting some kids and i put on hookleys and it was the the call i x i i i remember i finally got it and i burst out laughing and the kids looked at me like i was crazy like that's not that funny like it is if i explain it to you but i don't want to yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. It's like, ah, uh, should I explain Roman numerals to you? Nah, maybe later. <laughs> maybe later yeah. yeah, that that's what that's what I did get at the time because you know we we we'd gone over Roman numerals in school, but I was like, haha, I understand, I get that reference, and, yeah. <laughs> and I'm the smarter for it. So yeah. neener neener. <laughs> <laughs> it's always fun when you can have that Steve Rogers moment. Like, oh, exactly i get that reference yeah. like i know uh -huh. what that means that's hilarious <laughs> yep <laughs> uh, anything else 
No, like if if you haven't watched Hercules lately, go fire it up on Disney Plus. It's it, it's a good, it's a nice way to spend an afternoon. Mm-hmm. It yeah. still holds up. It definitely <laughs> does. I mean, and it it's a classic in its own right. Mm-hmm. Like we said, you know, it does. It's not not to the level of Lion King or whatever, but it, it doesn't need to be. Nope, it's still good. Yeah. All right. So, well, if any of our listeners want to chime in with their thoughts on Hercules or you know any of our news items that we've discussed today, uh, you can send us feedback by by emailing us at fiveishfangirls at gmail.com you can also visit our website which is the fiveishfangirls at gmail.com oh, no the fiveishfangirls.com sorry i uh, got a little bit on autopilot there um but yeah so yeah email us you can you can uh go to our website you can find our link to our social media facebook instagram YouTube, all those awesome things, and also help support the show by donating to our Patreon or to, um, or, or you know, buying our merchandise or whatever else strikes your fancy. And of course, we always, as always, we thank our listeners and our supporters for their support. <laughs> um, and you know, glad you're here. Glad that you're uh, enjoying what we do, and hopefully, we will continue to make excellent content for y'all to listen to mm-hmm. hey we got a whole backlog of disney stuff to, to... <laughs> oh my gosh yes <laughs> yeah. Yeah. i mean mm-hmm. we, we may we may have to at some point go back to like you know the the, the... before we were all born <laughs> yeah the, the the walt the walt era and just gush over you know yeah Sleeping Beauty and and all that mm. other stuff. Oh, yeah. I think you should do like how Disney Plus has like eras. You should like mm-hmm. do an era. Ooh, I know series. one that I would love to do. Sorcerer Stone, or the Sword in the Stone. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, I was like, like, wait a minute. Sword of the Stone would be a fun one. Mm-hmm. Yes. It has been a while since I've watched that. And again, fun source material to look into. Yes, of course. Yes. Yeah, yeah, of that's course. All. Yeah, that's that's that we will do. We will eventually do some of the older, like fa- you know, fairy tale based. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, Walt era cartoons as well. And yeah, you, know, you thought the Greek mythology was messed up? Just wait till we <laughs> talk about some of those fairy tales. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> oh yes. Oh yeah, no. the Brothers Grimm version have nothing on the Disney versions. Yes. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, I, I will say this. There was one Halloween several years ago where I was I was still subbing at the library and I went to it and it was like October and um I was looking at the new stuff that, that they'd gotten in and there was there was a couple that caught my eye and it was like you know, spooky versions of fairy tales or, or spooky versions of myths. That wasn't the title, but now I can, now I'm blanking on. It. I can I remember what the what the um, cover looked like. Obviously, <laughs> it's on my Goodreads anyway. And it's and I so I checked it out because I was like, oh, it's Halloween. I'm in the middle for I'm the, I'm in the mood for spooky stuff. Well, you know, it was basically the myths <laughs> as because mm-hmm. it, it advertised like, oh, you know, this is a twist. This is a twist on all your favorites. And it's like, no, this is exactly the same. I still enjoyed like, it. No, this is just the source yeah. material. This is the source material. <laughs> right, but yes. I, I mean, I still liked it because it was, you know, Halloween and I was kind of in the mood for that sort of thing. And the, the illustrations were sufficiently creepy. And I'm like, this is awesome. This is amazing. I don't think you had to do much twisting. <laughs> to make it right, yeah. yeah. But it was it was still fun. It was yeah. For those of you who weren't in the know before the Disney stuff, it's going to be a twist for you. But if you knew otherwise, you'll still enjoy it. Oh yeah, I, I was. I remember the first time I read the original Little Mermaid story was traumatizing. Oh yeah, well I was. I was Cinderella upset was she, no better. Yeah, I was upset no. that, that that the Little Mermaid didn't get a, a happy ending. I was like, what the hell exactly like, it's like i'm like I'm like yeah she mm-hmm. died but she didn't get to be with the prince rude mm-hmm. like i thought i thought fairy tales have happy endings yeah 
Uh, again, morality tales. Yes, I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, we'll get to all that stuff. But yeah. you know, there there is there is still a place for the Disney version for sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it, does, it doesn't mean that the original isn't still available for your traumatizing pleasure. <laughs> yeah. like, I always say, like when you like watch like the movie movies or shows that are based off something, you know, it's not completely accurate or close mm-hmm. it gets you interesting gets you it's the doorway into like finding the other stuff and yeah oh yeah, yeah. yeah like i said the rabbit hole i've been going down just learning about the, yeah the the actual mythology of of hercules yeah. quite, i love the greek the yeah. mythology so oh this is this is what okay. i was going to mention speaking of so if I, I don't know i'm sure i'm sure listeners have heard of this because it's everywhere now but if you haven't read lore olympus if, if you're into greek mythology and you want to read uh, you know it's it's a wet it's a webtoon but they've also published the first i want to say 25 chapters in a actual graphic novel probably with more on the way it's basically it, it's a it's a you know a, a take on the hades and persephone story Ooh, and it is nice. amazing it is so good like i heard about it and i it, you, you can read it for free on on it's like webtoon.com and it's like their their biggest one um and you know you kind of it's like you know mount olympus is sort of modern day but then the mortal world is actually ancient greece um but it's it is really good and actually some of the reading i've done about the you know the hades and persephone story um I don't know. It's something. I, it's definitely a rabbit hole I could go down on, and I'm or down, uh, down, and I am not gonna go onto it right now because we'd be here all night. <laughs> but it is, it is really good, and it's not just Hades and Persephone, but all the other gods and, and different things like that. So if you are interested in fictionalized, or you know, you know, different takes on on Greek mythology, and you've already read all the Percy Jackson stuff, yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> there's Percy Jackson too, but yeah, <laughs> I imagine well, a lot of I, people got that covered. Yeah, so if you're into Greek mythology, you probably have the Percy Jackson stuff covered. Um, but yeah, I, I highly recommend Lore Olympus. And I'm like, King, I wish I'd have I'd have found this earlier. Now, I mean, there's like over 200 chapters, so you could, you know, sit and read it for a while. There is a bit of a hiatus right now. The cliffhanger that, that, that she <laughs> left us on is kind of obnoxious. Evil? But I, but I get why. Evil cliffhanger? <laughs> Evil cliffhanger. Evil cliffhanger. And then she's like, I need to take four months off. And I'm like, well, I can understand why. But damn you! Curse <laughs> <laughs> you in the yeah, most I've serious seen, way. I've seen yes. the ad for that all because, like, um, like you can you can pick up the book at Walmart, ooh. which is like, I I was like, holy crap, it's right here! I didn't buy it; I should have. But I'm like, oh, I can read it on Webtoon for free. <laughs> you, I mean, it, yeah. Oh. Um, say if you like musicals, there's a relatively new one called Hades Town. I haven't seen it, but I've listened to the music and that's about like Hades and Persephone and all that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, like people people talk about like, oh, how dare he kidnap her? But there are some other interpretations of that where mm-hmm. it's more like, you know, because Demeter was so overprotective and, you know, they, you know, Persephone, and that's what Laura Olympus says, like, Persephone met Hades, and they kind of, you know, fell in love, but, so, you know, they, instead of, instead of her, him, like, forcing her, she comes down, and she eats the pomegranate scenes will- willingly, and that's actually, scholars have, have, um, have said that, that that's another, that's a valid interpretation of the story, it's not, you know, twisty, it's just because, you know, they call it the rape of Persephone, well, rape had a different meaning back then, um and, and you know not actually not that long ago it's more like kidnap or take away or or something like that mm-hmm. so you know just you know again be mindful of that when you're reading these these things because these, these kinds of things because um yeah translation culture changes over time words meaning of words change and so what 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 we find you know what, what we use to to describe something objectionable and and actually quite heinous these days had a different meaning back then mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. keep that keep that in mind i was actually having a similar conversation with my mom about how well she came from years ago it's kind of weird mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> words words are my life 
also history and yeah, how, yeah. How, how words change over time. So anyway, mm-hmm. that's my mm-hmm. shtick. Cool. Alrighty then. Well, we shall sign off for this week then. This is Brittany and Dabda saying goodnight. This is Chrissy saying goodnight from Salt Lake City. This is Sally from Wisconsin saying good evening. And this is Rachel in Indianapolis, Indiana. I'm a big tough girl. I tie my own sandals and everything. You have been listening to the Five Ish Fangirls podcast. You can find more episodes and information at the fiveishfangirls.com. Any and all books, movies, games, and any other forms of media mentioned are owned and operated by the respective copyright holders. No copyright infringement is intended or implied. If you wish to support the show, the easiest way is to leave us a rating and review. More ratings and reviews will make it easier for others to find the show. If you wish to support us monetarily, you can do so at patreon.com slash fiveishfangirlspodcast. All money goes towards fees and equipment to keep the show going. For official Fiveish Fangirls merchandise, visit redbubble.com slash people slash fiveishfangirls. We love hearing from our listeners and encourage feedback. You can email us at fiveishfangirls at gmail.com. You can also like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash fiveishfangirls. Thank you so much for listening, and may the squee be with you.